so that as soon as I have uh, the appropriate uh, quorum for the meeting, then I will open and begin the meeting. Thank you very much. Order, honorable members, good morning and welcome to the first meeting of the Committee for Section 194 Inquiry. My name is Dembingo Singoma and I am the Committee Secretary and uh, I am together with my team, which will be introduced to you at a later stage from various units of Parliament. And, uh, the purpose of this meeting, honorable members, is to elect a chairperson. And that provision is made for us on National Assembly Rule 160 and National Assembly Rule 129 AC. So, honorable members, the meeting is open. As I had indicated, the purpose of this meeting is to elect uh, the chairperson. Now, honorable members, the process is going to go as follows. I, as the committee secretary, will call for nominations amongst the members and the member members that would like to make a nomination would raise their hands and will be recognized by the committee secretary. The member will then state his or her full names and surname and proceed to make the nomination, also stating the full name and the surname of the member being nominated. I will then proceed to request the member being nominated to accept or decline the nomination. Once the member has accepted uh, uh, the nomination, I will then proceed to, go, uh, to call for a seconder. Once the member declines the nomination, I will proceed to call for a fresh nomination. Honorable members, if we have one member nominated, I will not put any vote, but the member being nominated will be declared the chairperson of the committee. If there is more than one nomination, it is then that uh, voting will take place where members will be allowed to only vote once 
and voting will be done by a show of hands. And for those members that might be experiencing challenges with the feature of showing hands, those members will be afforded an opportunity to make their voice heard. Just one last item, members, on that. Uh, if there are any objections raised of any of the, of the nominations, in terms of National Assembly Rule 165, those objections must be referred to the Speaker of the National Assembly and uh, 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 not uh, for the committee. Members, thank you very much. I hope that the process is clear. And if there's anywhere that, where I need to clarify, members can just indicate before I proceed to call for nominations. Honorable members, seeing that there are no hands, I will then proceed to invite nominations. Chair. Uh, uh, before you come in, Honorable Ngola, I see that there's a hand of Ms. Doris Lagule. I would recognize Ms. Lagule. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ngoma. I wanted to, 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 to nominate a person for the chairperson. So I don't know now that I must proceed with that or you proceed with Mr. Ngola because I don't know what is it that you want to say. Thank you, Honorable Member. Possibly to afford Mr. Ngola a chance. Uh, thank you. Mr. Ngola? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Chair. My, my name, of course, is Paula Ngola. I'm a member of the National Assembly. Uh, Chair, you, you, have, you have just outlined the voting process. Uh, in line with the virtual rules of the National Assembly, uh, usually when there's a voting that is going to take place in the, in the chamber, it's the whips of different political parties that uh, declare their numbers uh, those that are uh, physical and those that are connected uh, through the online system. So will that be the process equally here? If we do come to an extent of going for a vote, will we say then one person is going to nominate? I mean, is, one person is going to represent that particular party and, and, and declare the votes of that particular party. If we do go to that extent of voting. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ngola, for your question. It's noted. If I can just uh, take uh, Honorable Olomisa, then Honorable Kungubele, and Honorable Melda. Uh, good morning. Nangs, I'll support a Nova Ubano for Tel. Nova for Telebani Nang, I'm support. Thank you. Honorable Melda. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Secretary, I think maybe perhaps, uh, I don't know if I came in after, maybe you've done that, but should you start off by making sure that uh, the members of the committee are online and who the committee members are that are online, because they are the ones that will be able to participate if there's any voting or any proposals to be made. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Melda. Honorable Kungubele. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, I'm just awaiting for the process of voting. I, I have got no comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kungubele. Just to respond, uh, Mr. Ngola, uh, thank you for raising your question. Uh, for the processes of this meeting, I think the show of hands will assist me better. Uh, or the voice will assist me better, but uh, I, I can assure you that uh, we will do a, 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 a fair process of, uh, of voting. Uh, Mr. Oromita, thank you very much uh, for your message. Mr. Melda, I can assure you we have uh, uh, more than the required uh, quorum uh, for this uh, uh, meeting, and uh, the names of all the members uh, that are in attendance will be uh, uh, listed in the minutes of the committee. Uh, before I then proceed, honorable members, Chairperson, call for... uh, Chairperson sorry to, to intervene. My question is not with regard to the quorum. My question deals with the fact of who are the members 
appointed to the committee and that we know who they are exactly and if they are present, that only they will be allowed to make nominations and vote in any voting process. Definitely, uh, Mr. Melda, uh, thank you very much once again for your input. Uh, I can assure you as the uh, Secretariat support staff, we do have the names of all the members uh, of the committee as uh, they were eight seat uh, on the 21st of June. And uh, we do have, we are taking uh, attendance registers as the members are logging on. We do have a great presentation uh, uh, of members of the committee. And uh, as I had indicated, we do have the enough quorum as well to proceed with the meeting. Uh, but I will be guided by other members whether they would want me to go through the list of all the members of the committee. But this was uh, uh, on the announcements, tablings, and committee reports of Parliament of the of the 21 of June. Uh, I, I, I put it to you, members. Uh, Honorable Zagude. Zagude. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I think we have seen the, 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 the committee members on the ATC. So if anyone, or, or maybe what uh, Honorable Member is, Honorable Melda is referring to, is for us to, to say, I, Doris Yunis, I'm, I, I'm a member of this committee. I don't know. But the ATC spoke for all of us. So can we proceed with the nomination of the chairperson? Thank you, Honorable Zagude. My sincere apologies uh, for that misspell. It was just a slip of a tongue. Uh, so, Honorable members, can I now proceed with the uh, uh, with the business of the day? But before I do that, maybe just one last hand because it has been up for a while. Honorable Olashe. No, thank you very much, Chair. Good morning, everybody. It's an old hand, Chair. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Honorable members, I now proceed to call for nominations. And I would recognize Honorable Doris Lagude. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. My name is Doris Eunice Lagude, a member of this committee. I hereby nominate the Honorable Kugutile Richard Janji to be the chairperson of this committee. I so move. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lagude, who's nominated Mr. Kugutile Richard Janji. Mr. Ganti, can I check with you if you do accept the nomination? Are you not supposed to call for a second? Honorable Ganti, once you have, a, uh, if you accept, it depends whether you accept or decline. And if you accept, yes, I will proceed to then call for the second. But we first need to check with you whether you accept the nomination. Thank you. The alarm gala all the over, no bad. Thank you, Honorable Janti. Uh, Ms. Uh, Doris Yunis Lagude uh, nominated Mr. Kubutile Richard Janti, and Mr. Janji has accepted the nomination. Can I then check if there is a seconder? Mr. Kungubele? Thank you, Chairperson. I hereby second the nomination of Kubutile Richard Janji as the chair of this committee. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kumbule. Uh, for the honorable members, I will now proceed to go for to call for further nominations. Chairperson. Honorable Melda. Yes. No, I don't want to be difficult or technical. Um, my view is that Mr. Janki can only accept the nomination once he's been correctly uh, proposed and seconded. Um, the argument I want to take is that we may find that these proceedings may end up in some court one day, we don't know. And I just want us to make 100% sure, so you don't have to change anything, I would just suggest that you ask Mr. Yankee now that he's been formally proposed and seconded, if he accepts the nomination. Thank you. Mr. Janji, just to uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, put Mr. Melda it is so that uh, if you could just, uh, uh, I, I doubt very much that there'll be any harm. 
then uh, accepting again. Uh, ordinarily, the procedure would be that you accepted and then, uh, I mean, you are nominated and you accept and then you second. Nandale, thank you very much, Mr. Janji. If you could just accept again uh, so that everyone uh, uh, is with us. Thank you very much. My sincere apologies for that. I accept the nomination. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Janji. Honorable members, I will now proceed uh, to call uh, for uh, uh, nominations. Mr. Janji has been nominated, uh, uh, accepted, and seconded. I proceed to call for further nomination. Honorable Chair. Honorable Member. My name is Msumang, and I'm a member of the committee. I have a clarity seeking question. We reached a stage where members were divided into voting and non voting members. At some stage, we were informed that this was going to be reviewed. I don't know what is the status quo right now. Thank you, Honorable um, Simang. Uh, Honorable Member, you know that it's a 36 member committee and uh, consisting of all parties, and all parties have proportional voting rights. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Prof. Um, Simang. Uh, now that there are no further nominations, I will then uh, invite uh, Mr. I will then declare Mr. Kubutile uh, Richard Janji, chairperson of the Committee for Section 194 Inquiry. And uh, uh, congratulations, uh, Mr. Janji. And if you can please take your chair. Thank you very much, honorable members. Thank you very much, Diabulela uh, Nalum Simmons Wednesday, Nobala Committee. Honorable members, uh, allow me in thanking you to, ta to table very brief comments. Uh, I want to say to you as honorable members and compatriots in our land, I rise with profound humility and commitment to accept this huge responsibility of executing our constitutional duty as members of the National Assembly. It is indeed a privilege and an honor to be given an opportunity to lead such a diverse team assembled for the purpose of an inquiry, fact-finding mission. Colleagues, you are the biggest committee of the NA, 36 members, experienced and seasoned members, diverse in your skills that you bring here. Seniority is very notable. Today, colleagues were starting the work of the Committee of an Inquiry, as directed by the NA rules into one of our chapter nine institutions. Allow me to get more specific. Our work is an inquiry into the fitness of Advocate Musu M. Kwebane to hold the office of the Public Protector South Africa. That's what we are assembled for. The Office of the Public Protector has a special role in protecting the public. In terms of the NA rules, there are about seven steps from start to finish of the process, namely the initiation of the motion, with the speaker secondly applying her mind to the motion, with the motion being referred to a panel set up by the speaker, the National Assembly considering the report of the panel, Section 194 Inquiry Committee, which is you being set up to investigate, provide findings and reasons for those, the tabling of such findings with those reasons. And the last step is when the National Assembly decides. We are on step five, colleagues. The first four stages have been executed remarkably well. We must thank everyone who contributed to that success. The panel reports, the report concludes on prima facie evidence on two counts of misconduct and incompetence. However, the real work of investigation starts with this team. 
We are assembled not to rubber stamp. We are assembled to apply our mind to do our constitutional duty. And in executing our work, I want to urge you colleagues that we fo stay focused on due process. We pursue evidence and facts in front of us. We adhere to procedural fairness that we become the arbiters of facts. We ensure that there's always right to Audi and we must always stand on rationality. Such a focus members will help us avoid being trapped into two extremes that are out there. One extreme being advanced is that the public protector Recording is not in fit to hold office. That is one stream being advanced already. That it is not fit to hold office even before we start our inquiry. The other extreme is that the public protector is fit to hold office and therefore there is no need for this inquiry. These are the two extremes I'm urging colleagues that we avoid and will avoid that by staying on due process. Let us stay Focus on facts and evidence. Let the outcome be the undisputed product of adherence to facts. There are no predetermined outcomes. We are not assembled and coming here with outcomes in any of our briefcases. We've got to engage in this process and, and, and be honest on the evidence in front of us. This is a constitutional inquiry, not a judicial inquiry. Ours is an exercise on accountability. This is the role that we are going to have to play. From today, until we deliver the report to the National Assembly, we are on the spotlight. And with us being constituted as a committee and the chair being elected, we are immediately going to move with speed, but without rush. Further delays are not good for the integrity of this process. It will also not be in the best interest of the Office of the Public Protector South Africa for us to delay any further this process. And I urge all of us to, to, to stay with that in mind. Our next meeting must itemize key matters of what kind of roadmap must we agree on in terms of this process, a common modus operandi, format of the process and its approach. And as of tomorrow, having been elected, we will kickstart together with this NA team the process of document availability. We are having to, to make sure that as from next week, we are going to have to convene a meeting that is going to get to the substance of the issue because it would not have been possible for us to deal with the substance today without there having been a leader of the team that you have elected today as a chair. And therefore, having been elected here today, I would not want to make any detailed remarks. That time will come. I thought it would be important to just make these few remarks uh, before I introduce the NA team. But I will do that at the end. For now, honorable members, I want to take this opportunity as I conclude my brief remarks to really just ask all of you representing your parties in this very short meeting for your very brief remarks that you would want to make in this uh, particular meeting and I will do so by calling each one of us, if you do have any remarks. 
Honorable Hendricks. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Che. Honorable Che, I think that you uh, uh, gave leadership when you said that this is a constitutional inquiry and not a judicial inquiry. A, ju a judicial require, uh, inquiry is a creature of its own, but the constitutional inquiry uh, is, uh, uh, directs us on uh, what our position should be. Uh, for for Al-Jama, we recognize the fact that uh, the uh, Constitution and uh, provides for a, a judicial inquiries, but that's very expensive. We cannot have a Constitution and a rule of law and the judicial system that is out of the reach of the ordinary people. We had the same problem when it came to labor matters and that's why uh, the Labor Relations Act provided for a CCMA, which provided a cheap, a speedy service. And it was then recognized that the commissioners that were going to make the determinations um, will make mistakes uh, in the effort to speed up uh, resolution of labor disputes and bring uh, peace uh, 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 in our factories. And that's why in the case of the uh, 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 public protector, there was a need to have such an institution to let the ordinary man in the street uh, uh, have access uh, and um, just like in the CCMA for a speedy resolution and an inexpensive resolution. So for al when when uh, we saw in the provisions in the constitution that there is provision for public protector, it is in that light. And we were, th we were very happy that if anyone is not happy, with the decision of the public protector, you can then take your matter to the High Court. In the case of the CCMA, uh, you know, you can't take every matter to the High Court. You, there has to be specific uh, reasons related to review that you can go to the Labor Court. But in the case of the public protector, there was provision uh, to take matters to the High Court so as not to delay a resolution of disputes. So it is in that spirit that we see, that we accept that a public protector will make many mistakes. And um, that this provision in the constitution made it possible for the ordinary South African to bring the issues uh, 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 to the uh, public protector. But what did we find? We find that most of the people that bring the matters to the public protector could have gone to the courts, could afford to go to the courts. So the public protector is settled with uh, very sophisticated legal teams and legal eagles. You don't find that in the CCMA. It's a speedy process. Honorable Hendricks, I'm um, apology. We are going to get into the substance, uh, not necessarily in this meeting. So I urge you, uh, if you can, to be briefed. Uh, yeah, I will, I will conclude the uh, Honorable Chairman by stating that we need to understand that uh, the why and uh, why the uh, Constitution provided for a public uh, protector and in that spirit uh, for easy uh, dispute resolution uh, approach this inquiry. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Hendricks. Honorable Sukas. Thank you, Chair. Good morning um, to all the members. I um, would be very brief, Chair. I just want to say that um, it is impossible for us to not recognize uh, where we are today in the history of our country. And therefore, the responsibility is on each of us as we um, participate in this process. And as you have outlaid, to set a very high standard in how we apply ourselves and to contribute to rebuilding the integrity and trust 
that the public has in our institutions. And therefore, um, it is a privilege to participate here. And um, I trust that we will work together in the interest of our country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Sukas. This Kulua General. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, firstly, congratulations to you. And secondly, there is no doubt that uh, in order to do a good job in this assignment, we would have to apply a non-partisan approach. In that way, we will find a lasting solution. Having said that, I would like to suggest that the legal division of uh, parliament should secure a report for us from the Office of the Public Protector, a report which will reflect how many cases has she handled since she came into that office? How many cases has she been uh, a challenge in court? In other words, a, a, a reviewal process. Of those cases, how many she has won and how many she has lost? In that way, I think we will be in a position to speak from a position of uh, in, uh, an, infor an informed position. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, General uh, Olemisa. Um, Honorable uh, Melda. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Allow me, first of all, to congratulate you on your election as chairperson of this committee. It is the first time since the adoption of the current constitution in 1996 that Parliament goes through a process like this, and it's got huge implications. This committee is set up in terms of section 194 of the constitution, and 194 says very clearly that the public protector may only be removed from office on the grounds of misconduct, incapacity, or incompetence. So we are dealing with serious matters here. And I would like to say from the Freedom Front Plus's point of view that I agree that we should absolutely follow a due process. We should follow the evidence and the facts. We should go for procedural fairness. We should always remember the Audi Altrim Partem rule, and we should also take rationality into consideration throughout. If I may say on behalf of the Freedom Front Plus, we come to this uh, process with an open mind and we will go through the process and let the facts speak for themselves and take us to a conclusion. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Melda. Honorable Majosi. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, uh, uh, please excuse me for not switching on my video. I, I, I have a very, very bad uh, network situation here. We don't have electricity. Um, um, nonetheless, uh, let me greet the honorable members uh, today um, and also to say congratulations. Um, as you are elected to be the chairperson, we welcome your remarks as the chairperson and we shall begin the work of the inquiry and hopefully we will uh, participate and forget about uh, who comes from which organization in order for us to be able to reach a, a, a conclusion and, and, and make a mandate that is rightfully for the, uh, uh, for the parliament. Uh, parliament is looking upon us as leaders of, of different uh, organizations and but most importantly, as leaders who are in parliament, who are elected by people to make sure that we make uh, the right decisions. Hopefully the reports that we will get, they will then um, give us enough information to make sure that we, we, we make the right decision and we, 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 we make uh, correct contributions towards the inquiry. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Majosi. Honorable Mautwe. Honorable Ompile Mautwe, I thought she's uh, on the platform. Okay, I proceed. Honorable uh, Lothrit. Good morning, Chairperson, and thank you for the opportunity. First of all, on behalf of the Democratic Alliance, we want to congratulate you 
we also want to wish you everything of the best and strength for this very, very ex important project that is ahead of us. Um, we trust that this process will be done in an absolutely unbiased way, that we will follow due process. And I can assure you, Chairperson, that if we do follow due process, the DA is there to participate fully. And we also are very aware of the historic importance of this particular committee. And therefore, I think it is incumbent on all of us as members of this committee to note that we are, in fact, acting here in the interest of the country and that South Africa should be the primary goal and the rule of law when we participate in this community. But to conclude, we wish you everything of the best. Thank you, Honorable Lautrit. I now invite uh, Honorable Sisilo Guzola, Sisi Tolashe. And thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Good morning to you and good morning to the honorable members. First and foremost, on behalf of the African National Congress, I really want to congratulate you to be elected as a chairperson of this very important and historical uh, committee. We don't doubt the fact that you are equal to the task uh, that is before us, and we are sure that you are going to take us where we are supposed to go. Chair, as the other honorable members made mention of the fact that we are holding this first meeting after a very dark cloud over our heads as this uh, nation. We really appreciate the role that has been played by our communities who took upon themselves to make sure that they first begin to say no to violence and looting and they also took upon themselves to really protect what they have and also protect the jobs that we know as South Africans is what we are short of. We congratulate the Mandela Nation chairperson, wherein color does not mean anything, but everything means that we are equal, we are human beings under one flag of our South Africa chair. These processes came. Um, emerged from a very, very good uh, initiative where, to an extent, vigorous oversight took place to members of parliament. And as it did, the members of parliament themselves realized that that we have that was produced as our constitution does, to an extent, have some gaps in trying to really make sure that we follow our chapter nine institutions to the latter, wherein we know how to bring them in, but where the things come to be a little bit different, we are able to usher them out and using the same tool that has been designed by Mandela to make sure that that tool is a constitutional tool. It's a tool that we can all rely to. It's a tool that when we use our people will be very proud of us. We congratulate those members who identified that gap to an extent now we are amending that kind of a gap. Chair, we are not here to address or to deal with individuals here. We are here to do what we are paid to do, to make sure that we have all the tools that suggest on how everybody must be marshaled. And in this case, it's chapter nine, uh, institutions. Chair, as ANC, we put our trust in this committee as it is. It's not the first time we have this kind of committees. We must have differences because for us, we'll be able to find each other. It should not be itawe mklanga pambi. We must have serious differences so that we agree to disagree to an extent we'll be able to emerge united as this committee chair, we are trust that the parliament will provide all the tools to make us to be able to do what we are asked to do. We don't doubt you as a chair. We don't doubt the back offices that will be provided by our presiding officers to make sure that we do our work in a manner that we will be proud and even 
the generations to come will be proud of us. Chair, as ANC, we are committed as members of ANC, part of people of South Africa, to make sure that we emerge out of this committee victorious as a committee, as people are given a responsibility to make sure that the laws that govern this country are the laws that are enshrined in the Freedom Charter. Thank you very much, Chair. Kubeka again for Kanji, Subtembile, and Goskakur. Gabulela Mamutola, thank you very much uh, to all of you, uh, honorable members, for those uh, brief comments uh, of uh, appreciation, but also uh, of commitment to the process, and as well as giving us a homework already. What is it that we need to look into and do as we embark uh, on this important journey? We have taken notes about those issues. We are going to have to, to deal with them. Thank you very much uh, to, to all of you colleagues. Um, as, I, as I indicated, I think it's only proper that at this stage, uh, this backroom office this team that will be anchoring this process uh, is also made known as we start this meeting uh, so that we, 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 we understand who we Chair, Chair, just note that Julius Marema is part of this meeting. Oh, Mr. iPad. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, no, I have nothing to say to this uh, fishing expedition, Chair. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Malema. Um, as I was in the uh, case, Chair, hello. Yes, it's Umpilema. I'm also here, um, and I'm covered by the CIC. Thank you. I did call you Honorable Maudu. Okay, thank you, Chair. Thank you. We'll proceed, colleagues. Uh, I, I was uh, getting to a point where I'm going to ask our team, Advocate Dao, if you can assist in introducing to this committee the team that is going to be very critical in this work together with your secretary. Please. Thank, thank you, Chairperson, honorable members. My name is Mungana Lugastau. I am the acting section manager and the coordinator of this team. I will allow colleagues to introduce themselves so that we save time. Uh, committee section colleagues, they will be followed by the tables, the legal services, the research unit, and other sections. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Advocate. Uh, I'm not too sure if I must introduce myself again. And I'm a committee secretary uh, uh, within the committee section of Parliament, and I have been with that section for over 10 years. And uh, I'm happy that I will be serving in this committee. Uh, thank you very much, Advocate and Chair. Thank you. Next. Good morning, uh, honorable members of the committee. My name is Sisanda Sipamla. I'm also from the committee section. I will be assisting in my capacity as content advisor to this committee of inquiry. And I will be assisted by my colleague, Usfiso, who will follow in introducing himself. Thank you, honorable members. Good morning, honorable members, uh, colleagues and advocate Dao. My name is Sifiso. As a bonus feature, as a bonus feature, we want to ensure that we know the phase two. Ulele, Good morning, honorable members and colleagues. My name is Sifiso Makakula. I'm currently serving the standing committee on appropriations as a content advisor. I've been tasked by my manager, Advocate Tao, to participate in that committee in the capacity of a content advisor. So I'm happy to serve the committee, honorable chairperson and honorable members to the best of my abilities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Good morning, Chair. 
Oh, ma'am, I am Vaba Um, I'm assisting this committee. I'm a committee assistant of this committee, assisting with administration. I'm currently working in the committee section, assisting a number of committees. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Next. Uh, good morning, Chair and members. My name is Fatima Ibrahim. I'm a legal advisor in the Constitutional and Legal Services Office. Um, I'm uh, the dedicated legal advisor to this team together with uh, my colleague, Dr. Barbara Lewis, who will follow me in the introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Chair. Good morning, Honorable Members and Colleagues. I am Barbara Lewis, and I am from Legal Services along with um, Fatima Abraham. Thank you. Good morning, Members. My name, my name is Sepiso Nache. I'm the Procedural Advisor uh, in the National Assembly table, and I'm happy to have been seconded to assist with the work of this committee. Thank you. Next. Good morning, honorable uh, chairperson members. My name is Perrin Handik. I'm working with Mr. Nache uh, from, the, from the side of the National Assembly table. Thank you. Thank you. Advocate Dow. Good morning. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Chairperson and Honorable Members. My name is Kayali Tuvelim. I will be the Executive Secretary to you, Chair, assisting with administrative staff of the committee. Thank you. Your work starts immediately after this. Thank you. Next. Uh, my apologies, that may be safe to say that uh, we do also have uh, parliamentary communication services. Uh, Ms. Uh, Raja, uh, I, 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 she's attending to something else and she's not here, but we do have parliamentary communication services who will be responsible for media liaison. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good, mon good morning, Chairperson. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. My name is Shelly Monso. I'm the Section Manager Production and Publishing, responsible for Parliament Television. I will be requesting members to switch on their videos whilst they are on air. We will be responsible for that and for social media, as well as any other communication um, services that members will need. We have another section, media and um, stakeholder relations. We will work as a team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Memon Advocate Tao, is that your team? Anybody else? Thank you, Chair. I've seen uh, Muzidanu, who is a researcher. I'm not sure if he's still on the platform. Mr. Dano, are you there? Yes, uh, Advocate Dao. Uh, good um, morning, Honorable uh, Chair and Honorable Members. My name is Muzi Dano. I'm a researcher for the PC on Justice and Correctional Services, and I have been um, uh, forwarded. Uh, my name has been forwarded to assist in uh, this committee. Thank you. Thank you. Th th thank you, Chair. Uh, other members will come in as we uh, see the needs of the work. We will have to beef up the team and we will introduce them accordingly. Thank you, Chairperson and Honorable Members. Thank you very much, uh, Advocate Tao, for introducing that important team uh, to handle this very important work of this uh, Section 194 Committee of Inquiry. Uh, with that, Honorable Members, allow us to go and do the work in order to come to you prepared with a very prepared menu of how we're going to uh, start this, this roadmap. This meeting was not meant to be a very long meeting. Uh, and therefore, at this point, I want to thank all of you 
for attending to this meeting and kickstarting a very important process because today uh, the work of this committee has begun and therefore we're going to have to to stay on course in terms of all of those issues. I would want to thank uh, the team and everybody else. The, the meeting at this point stands adjourned. Thank you, members. Goals. Long live the chair. <laughs> Long live the deputy chief whip of the ruling party. Recording stopped. Yay! Yeah. Hey, Masana. Hey, you are Russia. 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 Hey, you